This video clip shows a summary of feeding processes in the muscle middleus. Here you can see red dye being drawn into the inhalant aperture of a muscle. This dye is being incorporated into the inhalant current produced by the feeding activities of the muscle. Notice the sensory lobes on the mantle surrounding the inhalant aperture. This is the inhalant aperture of the muscle as viewed through the endoscope. Maximum magnification of the endoscope is about 150x. The mantle sensory lobes now appear much larger, and you can see small 15 micrometer yellow particles being drawn into the mantle cavity. This is a low Reynolds number flow. Notice that when the muscle briefly stops pumping, all particles entrained in the flow immediately stop and maintain their distance from one another. In this case, viscous forces are relatively large compared to inertial forces. The gill of the muscle, which appears as a yellowish flat plate, can be seen in the mantle cavity in the background. The gill is composed of hundreds of filaments, each possessing cilia that are organized into several tracts. We will now enter the mantle cavity and obtain a closer view of the gill. This sequence shows the ventral edge of one gill demibranch. We have added blue dye so that the movement of water across the gill can be visualized. The water flow is created by the combined action of the lateral ciliary tracts of each gill filament. Notice that water movement within the mantle cavity is laminar. Also notice that the flow moves in two main directions. One is across the filaments or parallel to the long axis of the gill from left to right, and the other is perpendicular to the long axis. Notice the dye streams that are moving up and into the gill. In this close-up view of the gill, the individual filaments can clearly be seen as well as the gaps between filaments or the interfilamentary spaces. Each filament is about 63 micrometers in width. Water is drawn towards the gill and passes between the interfilamentary spaces and then eventually out the exhalant siphon of the muscle. Particles, however, are trapped on the gill filaments. The capture of particles is facilitated by the lateral frontal ciliary tracts of each gill filament. Here you can see 15 micrometer yellow particles being captured on the frontal surface of the filaments. Once captured, particles are transported to the ventral ciliated groove by the frontal ciliary tracts of each filament. Returning to the ventral edge of the gill, you can see the ventral ciliated groove. Captured particles enter the groove and are incorporated into a cohesive mucus string. The mucus particle string is transported anteriorly to the labial palps and the mouth of the muscle, in this sequence from right to left. Here is an extreme close-up of the ventral groove showing particles trapped within the mucus string. These particles include microalgal cells as well as some of the colored synthetic particles that we offered the muscle. We have now moved anteriorly to the point where the gills are inserted between the labial palps. Here the particle-laden mucus string is pulled from the ventral ciliated groove by the action of cilia on the dorsal margin of the palp which is the smooth structure at the bottom of the frame. The string is taken onto the labial palps and is transported across the ciliated ridges of this structure. The mucus string is broken down and material that was embedded in the string is dispersed. Individual particles can then be sorted and either ingested or rejected as pseudofeces.